It's Wednesday, October 20th, and the time for your Bobby this today morning news update. New laws are coming to give consumer protection authorities greater power to prosecute owners or promoters of pyramidal type schemes who are suspected of defrauding persons out of their hard earned money. Director of Consumer Protection at the Fair Trading Commission, Diva Leslie Ward, said the existing legislation does not allow her department to make offenders pay because of a loophole in the Consumer Protection Act as it relates to such schemes. Emmanuel Joseph has more. Speaking against the backdrop of a failed local blessing circle in which a number of people has been requesting thousands of dollars in refunds, Leslie Ward said she hopes her department will be able to have proposed amendments to the act in place as soon as possible. She explained that under the existing consumer protection law, an offence is committed if a person is offering a good or service while at the same time recruiting people in order to make money. However, the FTC executive said that because the operators of these schemes only recruit people and don't sell goods or services, their business cannot qualify as pyramids and therefore ties the hands of the department in seeking to prosecute. She disclosed that the department was also looking to address some other areas of the legislation which it believes would benefit from being tightened. The Consumer Protection Director said when authorities realized the challenge they faced in being able to help people recoup any money lost through these schemes, they had to do the next best thing embark on a campaign to warn Barbadians against investing in them. Leslie Ward also pointed out that she has not seen so many pyramid schemes in Barbados before and suggested that it may be a sign of the difficult economic times being experienced by people, particularly where the COVID-19 pandemic has taken many jobs or reduced the spending power in some families. In dismissing the notion that a pyramid scheme is like a meeting turn, the consumer protection advocate warned that the owners and scheme promoters are the ones who benefit most, but those at the bottom are usually left empty-handed. She also cautioned Barbadians to be very wary of certain online marketplaces or investment opportunities which are being disguised but are in fact pyramid schemes. But while the Consumer Protection Department may not have the full legislative backing to prosecute at this time, the Financial Crimes Division of the Royal Barbados Police Force has made it clear all it needs is a formal complaint that a fraudulent act has been committed for an investigation to start. However, Head of Financial Crimes Assistant Superintendent of Police Markeith Gibson Woodruff told Barbados today on Tuesday that they are not investigating any issues related to pyramid schemes or blessing circles for that matter, at least so far. But she too warned the Barbadians that pyramid schemes are illegal and should be avoided at all costs. Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. The economic uncertainty of the last 18 months is causing mourning families to significantly cut costs when burying their loved ones. President of the Barbados Association of Funeral Directors, Ian Griffith, explained that many are making the difficult decision to purchase low-end face-hole coffins as well as the mid-range flat-top caskets of the 1960s and 70s. For some families, it has been difficult because, you know, Barbados society, we are very proud people and... Sometimes society put pressures on families and it has been difficult for families, you know, there, there's a sense like before persons were not out for face or coffin because some family members or some friends would pressure the family and say, well, you can't do better than that, <laughs> you know, why are you putting mommy in that thing, you know, and they don't want a coffin, you know, because the coffin was seen to be what you call a pauper's burial, you know, like, uh, so in some ways persons have been uh, a little bit strained to make those decisions, but Actually, some persons are actually very understanding of the situation, would look at it from a reality point of view and make the, the choice to say, well, look, this is the financial uh, position we're in, this is okay, and they're quite fine with it. Right. They're not getting as much pressure as they used to before, mm -hmm. you know, because more and more persons are understanding now uh, what we, position we're in uh, as an island as a whole. A temporary solution has been found to alleviate the problems facing public service vehicle operators who complained they were being reported by police for working outside of the Constitution River Terminal at night. 
The pilot project will see a shuttle service facilitated by the Transport Board picking up commuters from across the island and carrying them directly to the terminal. Communications, Information and Marketing Officer of the Alliance Owners of Public Transport, Mark Haynes, has welcomed the decision, which was proposed following a recent tour of the Constitution River and Fairchild Street bus terminals by Minister of Transport Ian Gooding Edgel and his team, Transport Board officials, and members of the Royal Barbados Police Force. We do not find this shuttle, but we are, we are looking at a sh using a shuttle service. And this is the shuttle, the commuters from the various parts of the island to the CRT. Because, you know, the CRT closes early at night. And one of the issues. Mm -hmm. So they will, the minister understands the situation and is trying to bring resolution to it. So he is going to, uh, because right now they cannot build a bridge out there by the by NASCO, but the funds are not there at this point. But this will be a temporary measure designed to um, the easy situation so that the commuters will not go out there by the transport board and avoid the hours. But they will get they will get shuttle from the various point to the CRT. Local farmers are assuring the public they will be able to satisfy the high demand for produce and meats for the holiday season. Furthermore, Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Agricultural Society, James Paul, says consumers should be pleased to know that no price hikes are anticipated. Demand is not like what it was, like what it was. in previous years, um, and that's to have there's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. News from the region, former Bohemian Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis dismisses suggestions that he is to blame for the rise in COVID-19 cases in the country. More in this report from Our News, Bahamas. The former Prime Minister says he isn't responsible for the recent spike in COVID-19 cases and recommends that Health Minister Dr. Michael Darville follow the science. As for the suggestion that the rise in cases could be linked to the general election, Minna said it's nonsense. Scientifically, the science is there. Most of the infection would manifest itself within five to six days, which means that the rallies would have been way before the 16th. But let's just say the infection occurred on the 16th. It meant that it would have manifested itself by the 22nd, 23rd. We are now way in October. It does not make scientific sense. On Monday, Consultant Physician Staff Association President Dr. Sabrika Pender butler said the election could have led to the COVID spread on the islands. Meanwhile, Dr. Darbell insisted it was Minnis who called an election in the middle of a surge in cases. Several family islands have seen an increase in recent weeks. Dr. Minna said his administration had a plan to protect the family islands. We concentrated on beefing up Grand Bahama and New Providence as much as we can and present a blockade to the family islands to protect 
the family islands because we knew that if the infection spread to the family islands, our medical facilities are not up to par to deal with that. On the international front, scores of unvaccinated workers are facing potential job losses as COVID-19 vaccination mandates are enforced across the United States. The details of that story in this Reuters TV report. Thousands of police officers and firefighters in cities like Chicago and Baltimore could also soon be out of work as mandates take effect that require them to report their vaccination status or submit to regular testing. And at General Electric, workers are required to be vaccinated by December 8th, per President Biden's mandate for federal contractors. In fact, unvaccinated workers across America are facing possible job cuts as a growing number of states, cities, and private companies enforce vaccine mandates. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot has been battling with the police union, which came out against the mandate for city workers. What we've seen from uh, the Fraternal Order of Police, and particularly the leadership, is a lot of misinformation, a lot of half-truths, and frankly flat-out lies, in order to induce an insurrection. About a third of Chicago's more than 12,700 police employees missed a Friday deadline to report their vaccination status, something Chicago Police Union President John Catanzara still pushed back against this week. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.